The Ultimate Fighting Championship, aka UFC, has become the leading promotion for American mixed martial arts over the last two decades. Over the course of UFC history, the company has held over 500 live events across the world. With the company holding UFC events almost on a weekly basis, they have taken things to a new level by traversing the globe to expand MMA over the entire world. Kamaru Usman is to defend his UFC title against Leon Edwards at UFC 278. Let's dive into it. Kicking us off, Kamaru Usman to defend the UFC UFC title against Leon Edwards at UFC 278 on August 20th. Kamaru Usman will defend his UFC Walter White title against Leon Edwards in the main event of UFC 278 on August 20th in Salt Lake City, Utah. It was announced Saturday during the UFC 275 broadcast. Usman vs. Edwards was the expected title matchup, and the UFC was just waiting for Usman to recover from February hand surgery before booking the fight. ESPN has Usman ranked as the number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. At welterweight, Usman is ranked number one, and Edwards is number four. The two have met before, with Usman beating Edwards via unanimous decision in December 2015. Usman, 20-1, has won 15 straight UFC fights, the second most in promotion history behind Anderson Silva's 16 in a row. The Nigerian-born fighter is coming off a unanimous decision victory over rival Colby Covington at UFC 268 last November. Usman, 35, has five successful welterweight title defenses after winning the belt in March 2019. Edwards, 19-3, 1 NC, has not fought since a unanimous decision win over Nate Diaz at UFC 263 in June 2021. The Jamaican-born England resident is unbeaten in 10 straight, without a loss since he fell to Usman seven years ago. Edwards, 30, has beaten the likes of Vincent Luque, Donald Cowboy Cerrone, and Rafael Dos Anjos en route to the title shot. The UFC has not visited Salt Lake City since August 2016, a UFC fight night card headlined by Yair Rodriguez and Alex Caceres. UFC 278 will be the first UFC pay-per-view card in the city and only the second UFC event there ever. Next, nobody knows who second best is. Dreykus du Plessis has a plan, and it continues at UFC 276. It has been almost a year since South Africa's Dreykus du Plessis, 16-2, entered the octagon, a successful UFC 264 outing last July that only lasted two rounds, knocking out Trevin Giles. But his quest to return has been a prolonged battle, complete with injury, opponent changes, fight cancellations, and incredible frustration. The wait ends on July 2nd when he'll face his toughest opponent yet, Brad Tavares, 19-7. At T-Mobile Arena at UFC 276, a card headlined by the middleweight title fight between Israel Adesanya, 22-1, and Jared Cannonier, 15-5. Despite Saturday's challenge, Duplessis remains forward-looking, intent on a fight against Kelvin Gastelum, someone who he has previously scheduled to face. He owes me that fight. He took the food off my table. But this is about more than just one fight. It's about being the best in a sport where every single fighter believes they are the best at what they do. The only difference is Duplessis is ready to prove it. A successful injury recovery set up Duplessis' third fight, an undercard UFC 273 bout versus Chris Curtis, 28-8. However, just short of a month before the fight on April 9th, the American pulled out due to injury and was replaced by countryman Anthony Hernandez, 9-2. Having shaken off the opponent change and adjusted to Hernandez's battle, Duplessis was then offered an irresistible main card opportunity against 10th-ranked middleweight Gastelum, 17-8, and an offer confirmed just 10 days before fight night. A week before their clash at the Dubai International Airport, Duplessis received a phone call telling him that Gastelum had pulled out of the fight due to an undisclosed injury, per UFC officials, and Duplessis would be pulled off the card entirely. While Duplessis has a healthy amount of respect for Gastelum, the late withdrawal left a sour taste in his mouth, and he says he has unfinished business with him. Moving on, UFC moves Misha Tate, Lauren Murphy, women's flyweight contender bout to July in Long Island. A scheduled women's flyweight contender bout between Misha Tate and Lauren Murphy has been moved to UFC Long Island on July 16th, the UFC announced Monday. The bout was moved from UFC 276 on Saturday, the UFC said, due to COVID-19 protocols. Murphy wrote Sunday on Twitter that she tested positive for COVID. It's super unfortunate to get COVID right before International Fight Week, Murphy wrote, but I I just couldn't, in good conscience, go forward with the fight this weekend and risk getting others sick. I'm recovering and will be in fighting shape soon. ESPN has Murphy ranked at number four in the world at women's flyweight. Tate, one of the biggest women's stars in UFC history, will be making her flyweight debut at USB Arena in Elmont, New York. Tate is a former UFC women's bantamweight champion. Tate, 19-8, 35, of Las Vegas, returned from a five-year retirement last July. She went 1-1 one one in 2021 and decided to move down to flyweight after 
after a loss to Ketlin Vieira last November. Murphy, 15 and 5, a 38-year-old Houston resident, fought for the title in her last bout, a loss to champion Valentina Shevchenko at UFC 166 last September. Next, Stevie Ray finishes Anthony Pettis to punch playoff ticket as upsets reign at PFL 5. Stevie Ray needed to finish former UFC champion Anthony Pettis on Friday in order to make the 2022 PFL playoffs. Well, mission accomplished for the 32-year-old veteran. Ray, 24 and 10, punched his ticket to the PFL playoffs with a rare finishing move against Pettis. The Scottish fighter tapped Pettis via modified body lock at 357 of the second round at PFL 5 inside Overtime Elite Arena. The victory earned him five points and the number four lightweight seed. The finish came after Ray secured a body triangle on Pettis from the back. Pettis, 23 and 10, successfully turned into the body lock, but Ray maintained control of Pettis' lower body with his legs and twisted him awkwardly, injuring his rib. Pettis winced in pain and immediately tapped. He eventually left the building on his own accord and indicate he would return for the playoffs. Despite the loss, Pettis is still the number one seed at lightweight, thanks to a first-round finish of Miles Price in May. If he is healthy enough to make his playoff appearance, he will face Ray in a rematch. Olivier Albin Mercier and Alexander Martinez are the numbers two and three seeds, respectively. Ray's victory was not the only upset of the night. In the heavyweight division, 2021 champion Bruno Capelosa, 15 and 6, suffered a major defeat at the hands of Mateus Scheffel, 16 and 8. Scheffel of Curtiba, Brazil, hurt Capelosa with punches several times in the first round and held his own on the feet the rest of the way. All three judges scored the heavyweight bout for Scheffel, who was a massive betting underdog going in. The PFL's regular season will wrap up next week in the same venue and feature the women's lightweight and welterweight divisions. Finally, Johnny Eblen captures Gegard Musai's Bellator middleweight title in a five-round sweep. Johnny Eblen was undefeated coming in, but really outdid himself Friday night, dominating Bellator middleweight champion Gegard Musasi after five rounds to take away the belt in the main event of Bellator 282 in Uncasville, Connecticut. Eblen, 12-0, used his strong wrestling to control long stretches on the canvas, but to get the fight there, he relied on aggressiveness in the stand-up, wearing down Musasi with punches and kicks on the way to earn a unanimous decision. All three judges scored at 50-45 for Eblen. For Eblen, a 30-year-old fighting out of Coconut Creek, Florida, it was his eighth win inside the Bellator cage, and by far the biggest. Johnny Eblen controlled Gegard Musasi both on the ground and in stand-up in Friday night's unanimous decision victory. Lucas Noonan, Bellator MMA. Musasi, 49-8-2, arrived at Mohegan Sun Arena, having won four fights in a row and 12 of his previous 13. He was in his second title reign at Bellator and previously had been champion in three other promotions, including Strike Force. He is number eight in the ESPN middleweight rankings. Musasi, who is 36 and from Amsterdam, was a kickboxer before coming to MMA, and stand-up fighting has been his forte over a two-decade career. But Edlin took it to him, knocking down the champion with a winging right hook and setting the tone for what was to come. Musasi did have his moments, especially in round three, when he was making Edlin miss and landing straight punches. But after being blasted with a punch to the face, Edlin came forward for a takedown and took control on the canvas. And he maintained control for much of the rest of the fight, both on the canvas and on the feet. Before the main event, Danny Sabatello and Magomed Magomedov advanced in the Bellator Bantamweight World Grand Prix. Sabatello, 13-1, defeated Leandro Higo, 21-6, by unanimous decision, 49-46, in a slow-paced, grappling-heavy quarterfinal, and will next face interim champion Raufen Stotz. Magomedov, 19-2, put a sudden end to a tight battle with Enrique Barzola, 18-6-2, by jumping to a guillotine submission at 127 of round 4 to move into a semifinal matchup with Patchy Mix. Unfortunately, that is all the time we had for today. Make sure to like and follow for more similar fighting news. Till next time, cheers!